My Minecraft world or server is so boring. I really need a way to spice this up, is what I bet you were saying before you came across this video. If you are wondering that, that's good, because you've come to the right place. I know the best way to spice up your world, and that's to create a fully formed republic with wars, and history, and culture, and colonizing, and you get it by now. So, with that out of the way, hey guys, my name is RedfireRax, and today I'll be showing you all how to create your own country in Minecraft. This can be useful for a Minecraft server, or if you're on your own and just looking for some personal fun, so let's get right into it. So before we go ahead and start building our country, there is some things we need to consider and decide before we get all uh, constitutionally and stuff. First things first, you have to decide what type of nation you want to create. Some examples of these are an autocracy, a monarchy, an empire, diplomacy, fascist, communist, etc. It's up to you. After you got that all sorted out, you'll also have to consider what type of languages your country will speak, and if it'll be a religious state or not. For languages, it's all up to you. La langue française, peut-être? English, perhaps? For religion, you could also choose nothing, that's a viable option. Or you could choose an existing religion, or you can just make one up. But again, it's all up to you. For the sake of this video, I'll be making a monarchy with myself as the king. Et les langues nationales seront le français et l'anglais. Plus that weird made up language I made. The religion of my state will be called pandaism, where we all worship the pandas of the jungle. Because they're so flippin' adorable, like look at these things. <laughs> and plus, why not, it's Minecraft. So now that all the technical stuff is out of the way, let's get into the actual important stuff. First things first, to build your country, you'll need land. Every single country has land, and every country has a way of dividing up their land to better govern people's specific needs. For example, the United States of America has 50 states, and each one of these states exists to govern the people's specific needs in these regions. Because with a country as large as the US, the federal government can't cover every small issue in every state. On top of this, states are further divided into counties and municipalities to once again better govern the people within these regions. Without the municipalities, there's no states, and with no states, there's no US. Every single country needs some sort of way to divide up their land such as this. It helps address the needs of all citizens in all regions and to make sure all citizens are happy and content. As you can see here, I've built myself a little dirt house in this village. And from here, I'll be building out my country. So, because I own this house and this village, I think, I didn't really consult with the villagers about this whole thing. Don't tell them, please. Uh, <laughs> So because I own this house and this village, these lands, and let's say everything within 100 blocks of here will be the start of my country. To divide up this uh, area, I'll be making four administrative districts to better govern these regions. You can make however as many as you want, it just depends on how big of a land you're claiming. Great, so now we've got land, but we have to still name our country and its regions, which is what we'll be doing next. When naming your country, I recommend to keep it simple. There are several different types of ways to go about when naming your country or region, and I'll go over a couple of these ways now. One way you can go about naming your country or region is to name it after something in the natural landscape. For example, as you can see in front of me, there's a ravine. I could call my country Ravinia, or something along the lines of that. In fact, many names of modern day countries refer to things in the natural environment. An example of this is the country of Montenegro in Europe, which literally translates to Black Mountain. Or, when naming your country or region, you can literally just go the opposite way and translate it from another language. An example of this is Australia, which is Latin for Southern Land. Or, the province of Nova Scotia in Canada, which literally means New Scotland. Speaking of New Scotland, you could also name your country after something that already exists. Like, if I wanted to name my country New New York. European settlers did this a lot when setting up new cities. And ex examples of these are New York, New Brunswick, New Hampshire, and so on and so forth. Another way to name your country or region is just to add the suffix land, or ia, on the end of another word. Ia actually means land of, so you'll be calling your country land of the blank if you choose to add ia as a suffix. 
Examples of these are England, which means land of the Angles, which were the people that settled in the region, or, back to the Balkans, Serbia, which means land of the Serbs, which were also the people that settled it there. They both mean the same thing, so it's all up to you. You could also have the suffix stand to the end of your country's name, and that also means land of. And finally, if you really want to, you could also just straight up make something up, like... Uh, cut down tree, uh, or something like that. It's so up to you. For my civilization, I'll be choosing something from the natural landscape. I'll choose Papia? No. Um, Iceland? No, that already exists. I can't do that. Um, Among Us? No, I don't, I can't do that either. Uh, that mountain kind of looks like an obelisk. Uh, sure, obeliskia. I guess I'll go with that. And for my regional names, I'll just pick something from each naming category I mentioned. I'll do, uh, Nova Alberta, um, Desert Land, Ravinia, and, and Toplampia. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a master at naming things. So now that we've both chosen our country names, it's time to choose a flag and a national symbol. Just like when naming your country, keep your flag design simple. In fact, one of the first rules of designing a good flag is to make it so easy that any child could draw it. Let's take France for instance. The flag of France is literally three colored bars and straight lines. You can't get any more simple than that. Another important rule of flag design is to never, ever put text on your flag. I'll put a little example flag up on the screen now so I can show you why that is. Let's say this blue flag is the new flag of my new country of Obeliskia. Now let's say I put a crest with some words on it, as many flags already do. Looks okay, right? But now watch it wave. See, you can't even read a lick of that. What does it say? I don't know. That's why you don't put text on your flags. Anyway, most good flags use at least two or three of these colors. Red, blue, green, white, yellow, and black. So I recommend going for these when designing your flag. Minecraft has so many cool banner designs to choose from, so I recommend you play around with them for a little bit in a creative world until you find something you like. Ah, this one's perfect for me. W wait, wait a minute. It's, it's night now. Huh. How long have I been doing this? After you've got your flag done, it's time to write a constitution. We can finally get all constitutionally and stuff. Now, I bet you're thinking that a constitution is pretty easy to write, right? And that all you need is a book and quill, and all you have to do is just write some rights and stuff, right? Or that all you have to do is write some rights and make sure that everything you write is all right, right? Well, no, that is wrong. A constitution is more than that. A constitution is a document by the great leaders of a nation that outlines the freedoms of all the peoples, their rights, their basic laws, and the great ideals for the future. A constitution is great, for a great constitution gives the people hope that by moving to your country that they will live a free and prosperous life away from danger and harm. Or you could not do that and just write a bunch of garbage. Like that sheep are the highest form of power and then you have to do sacrifices to sheep every day or something. For real though, generally a constitution will have a section that outlines the rights of its citizens, what powers the government has and doesn't have, and how the government will run. I'll leave a bunch of links to different worldwide constitutions in the description so you can get a better idea of what is included in them. For my country of Obeliskia, I'll be doing the sheep worshipping thing. So now pandas and sheep are both sacred. That's pretty cool. My country must really like fuzzy animals then, eh? So, after your constitution is all written out and passed by your government, it's time to talk about cities. Every country has at least one city. Some countries like the United Kingdom or China have many cities, and some countries just have one. 
Countries with one city are called city-states, as their territory is just the area surrounding their city. Some examples of city-states are the Vatican, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Every single country, even city-states, has a capital city. Of course, as you could probably tell, city-state capitals are pretty much the whole country since the country is one city. For example, the capital of Singapore is Singapore. Anyway, as I was saying, every single country has a capital, and your country needs a capital too to host your country's government. On top of this, regions of a country also have their own capitals that host those regional governments. An example of this is the province of Ontario in Canada, whose capital is the bustling metropolis of Toronto, or the province of Quebec in Canada, whose capital is the old French-like Quebec City. In case you're not looking to build a whole city, you can just designate your capital city as your base. In my case, I'll be designating this desert village as my capital, which I will now call Kingston. How original. Right now, my country is pretty small, so I won't be making any provincial capitals. Actually, my country is too small. I think it's time for some expansion. Most borders are designated using features in the natural landscape like rivers or through mountain ranges. That is, unless you're the former colony of a colonial power, then your borders are just designated using straight lines. An example of this is the US-Canada border. Like seriously, this is the longest border between two countries and most of it is just a straight line. Anyway, as I was saying, most borders are made using features off of the natural landscape, like mountains, rivers, or lakes. Some, however, are made of straight lines on the map, like the US-Canada border, as I just mentioned, which is on the 49th parallel. Before designating your new borders, I recommend to map out your country first. So, for my country, I'll be expanding my borders along this river to the left, and along this ocean to the right. Every country also typically has ocean territory, known as maritime borders, as defined by the UN's Law of the Sea. But if you're on a single player world, you don't really have to worry about that. If you're playing multiplayer though, I recommend you set your maritime border to at least 100 blocks away from your mainland. That is, unless another country claims it too, then you'll need to do some negotiations. Since you've just expanded your country, now would also be the time to expand the borders of your provinces, and it'll be the time to add new provinces. It's also the time to add provincial capitals, so go ahead and designate those wherever you want to. Wow, has my country really grown! Now I'm going to need a military to enforce my claims, and that's what I'll be doing next. I hope you guys enjoyed that cinematic. <laughs> anyway, a military is pretty easy to set up in Minecraft. All you need is a headquarters and some outposts along your country's claimed territory. At your headquarters, you should have a training ground, an armory, and perhaps some fancy TNT cannons to properly defend yourself. Some countries also have border walls, and if your neighboring country is giving you some trouble, then you could just build a wall with some TNT cannons and a mini armory to better defend yourself. Wow, looks like your country is prosperous, your capital is thriving, your military is all-powerful, and you have a beautiful landscape with some beautiful world wonders. You're living in luxury! Looks like nothing can go wrong now. Wait, is that foreshadowing? That better not be foreshadowing, no. No, 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 no! Everyone, we are gathered here today to address the problem with our king. He just marched into our village and declared it a kingdom. This is unfair. 
If anyone should control these lands, it should be us, the people who were here first. Yeah! Woo! Oh, but I quite like the king. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here then? Oh, I heard there was free food. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not free food for you, at least. <laughs> don't even think about playing that ridiculous laugh track again. Anyway. We will siege the king's palace and overthrow him at sundown. We will take this country and make it our own. Yeah! Woo! The, the end, end of, of the king. king. The, the end, end of, of the king. king. The end of the 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 What's all that noise outside? The end of the king? What's going on? Oh my gosh, the capital's on fire. Citizens of Kingston, citizens of Obeliskia, what is the meaning of this? What is happening? We are here to end your rule! The whole country is rebelling to stop you. You came here without our permission and made this a country and now we will take it back! Yeah! Woo! Y you can't do that, I'm your king! I'm gonna call the military and you guys will all be in so much trouble. Ha! You can't do that, the military is already on our side. What? No, G Golem Guard, is that true? On top of that, we've also torched your parliament. Surrender to us now! Ha! <laughs> You're bluffing. The parliament's located on the top of Mount Obelisk. There's no way you guys could have climbed that in a million year. Oh my gosh. You actually torched the parliament. I, I worked so hard on that parliament. <laughs> no, don't even think about playing a laugh track. This is too sad of a moment. Okay, fine. I surrender. What do you want from me? What are you gonna do? I thought you guys were just gonna lock me in jail or something. You're launching me into space? <laughs> you don't even think about a laugh track. Yeah, we thought space was a more, uh, permanent solution to our problem. Hi, your highness. It's Jonathan, nice guy. I tried to convince them otherwise, but they wouldn't listen to me. Sorry. Yeah, thanks for trying, Jonathan. And that, everyone, is the final step to creating your country to keep your citizens happy or else they may rebel. You could just retaliate with your military, but I seriously would not recommend that. Instead, try coming up to a compromise. My compromise, as you can see, is me stepping down as king and being launched into space. I couldn't successfully stop this rebellion, but maybe if you play your cards right and listen to your citizens, then maybe you could stop a future rebellion in your country. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me so long to make, and I do hope you consider subscribing and clicking the like button. I hope if you followed all my steps in this video, your country thrives and your people prosper. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Enough chit chat. Press the button and get this over with. Ah, uh, alright. Uh, see you later. Goodbye, Obeliskia.